द स्टोरीज ऑफ महाभारत रिटोल्ड बाय सुदीप्त भौमिक वेलकम डियर फ्रेंड्स टू नदर एपिसोड ऑफ द स्टोरीज ऑफ महाभारत इन द लास्ट एपिसोड वी हर्ड हाउ कृष्णा सैक्रिफाइस्ड घटोत कच टू बी किल्ड बाय कर्णाज शक्ति वेपन and thus save arjun from a sure death it was past midnight The soldiers were tired and couldn't stay up any longer. They dropped their weapons and lay down to get some sleep wherever they could. Some on horsebacks, some on elephants, and some lay down on the ground behind the dead animals. Arjun realized that without some rest, the soldiers won't be able to fight at all. He called at his soldiers and said, "Brothers, I know you are tired, and it is difficult for you to fight in this darkness." I suggest you suspend fighting and try to get some sleep. When the moon rises and lights up the battlefield, we can resume the battle. The Pandava soldiers sighed in relief. The Kaurava soldiers were tired too, and when they heard of Arjun's announcement, they called at Duryodhana and Karna and said, "O king, the Pandavas have announced a temporary ceasefire to give their soldiers some rest." we pray you let us get some rest too duryodhana agreed soon the entire battlefield went to sleep and a dead silence engulfed kurukshetra after a couple of hours a full moon rose and lit up the night sky the soldiers woke up refreshed and once again the battle commenced Dron took a huge contingent of Kaurava army and launched a ferocious attack on the Pandavas. It seemed the old man has regained his youth. His chariot raced through the battleground, leaving a trail of dead Pandava soldiers behind. Soldiers from Chedi, Kekai, Shringa and Matsya all were devastated by Dron's arrows. King Drupad and King Virat along with their armies tried to stop throne and soon a vicious fight broke out between them three of drupad's grandsons came forward to help their grandfather throne killed them all then throne attacked drupad and virat he hurled a spear at virat the spear struck his chest and killed him instantly drupad shot several arrows to throne to counter his attack Drone dodged them all, and then he hurled another huge spear at Drupad. Drupad tried to cut the spear with his arrows, but the spear hit Drupad and decapitated him. The sun rose on the eastern horizon on the fifteenth day of the war. The soldiers worshipped the sun god and continued the battle, and Drone. continued his rampage of the pandava army krishna knew that something must be done to check throne he called yudhishthir and bhim to one side and said look as long as throne has his bow in hand nobody can defeat him but if we can make him abandon his weapons it is possible to kill him what do you suggest we do asked yudhishthir Krishna paused for a moment then said I think if we give Drone the news of his son's death he'll drop his weapons and stop fighting someone should go and give him this news but Ashwatthama is alive Arjun sounded confused Krishna didn't answer but his silence was enough Arjun was visibly upset. You want us to lie to our teacher Drone? Krishna looked at Arjun and said, "I think now is the time to focus on winning this war rather than be the most righteous side. Else Drone alone will kill you and end this war." 
Bhim thumped his chariot and said, Krishna is right. Drone wasn't righteous when he and his generals killed Abhiman knew. Why should we? Yudhishthir was in a fix. He knew this is possibly the only way to neutralize Drone. Yet, in his heart, he was reluctant to tell an outright lie, especially when he is known to be the person who always speaks the truth. He looked at Bhim and said, I agree with you, Bhim. The Kauravas have abandoned righteousness the day they killed Abhimanyu. Still, still we cannot stoop to the level of the Kauravas. We must find a way such that we don't fall from our path, yet we succeed in deceiving Drone. I know what to do, Bhim cried out. Bhim didn't wait any longer. He drove away his chariot into the battlefield. Everybody was puzzled. Only Krishna smiled. Indravarma, the king of Malav, had an elephant named Aswatthama. Bhim decided to kill the elephant and tell Drone that Aswatthama is dead. That should do the trick, he thought. The moment Bhim saw Indravarma's elephant Aswatthama, he picked up a huge mace, swung it above his head and then hurled it aiming at Aswatthama's head. The mace struck the elephant right between the eyes and crushed his skull. The huge beast stumbled and fell dead on the ground with a heavy thud. Bhim cried out, Aswatthama is dead! He turned his chariot and drove it close to Drone while yelling at the top of his voice, I killed Aswatthama! Aswatthama is dead! <laughs> Drone was fighting Trishtidunga. When he heard Bhim's cry, he froze for a moment. Aswatthama dead? His only son, his gallant son is dead? How is this possible? There exists only a handful of warriors who could kill Ashwatthama. Bhim must be bluffing to demoralize him, he thought. He ignored Bhim and attacked Drishtadunna with such ferocity that within moments Drishtadunna's horses were killed and his chariot shattered into pieces. Bhim picked up Drishtadunna in his chariot and said, Only you can kill drones, so get up, gather yourself and attack again. As Bhim's chariot veered away with Drishtadunna, Drone drove his chariot near Yudhishthir. He stood up and said, Yudhishthir, I heard Bhim yell, Ashwatthama is dead. Is this true? I couldn't believe Bhim, but if you say it's true, I believe. Yudhishthir was dumbfounded and didn't know what to say. He stammered and said, Gurudev, I I I'm not exactly sure if Ashwatthama has been killed. Let me, let me find out. Yudhishthir asked his charioteer to take him to Bhim. When he arrived near Bhim, Krishna and Arjun were there too. Yudhishthir asked, Bhim, Gurudev said you have been claiming that Ashwatthama is dead. Is that true? Bhim said, yes, it is true. Indra Varma, the king of Malav, had this huge elephant named Ashwatthama. He was trampling and killing hundreds of our soldiers, so I killed him. Now, if you tell him that Ashwatthama is dead, he'd believe that his son Ashwatthama has been killed and he'd quit fighting. Krishna said, my dear Yudhishthir, for our sake, you'll have to utter this little white lie. Remember, a lie to save lives isn't a sin. Yudhishthir had no option but to agree. He asked his charioteer to take him close to Drone, but not too close. From a distance, he screamed, Dead is Ashwatthama! And then he dropped his voice and with a whisper said, The elephant that is. 
In the noise of the battlefield, those trailing words were lost and couldn't be heard even by his charioteer. Yudhishthir was the only man on earth who had never lied in his life. For this virtue, he enjoyed a special gift from the gods. His chariot wheels never touched the ground and always floated a few inches above. The moment he said those words, his chariot dropped and the wheels touched the ground like any other. When Dron heard Yudhishthir claim that Ashwatthama has been killed, his arms became numb. His bow slipped off his hand and his legs couldn't hold his body weight anymore. Dron stumbled down on his chariot in a stupor and looked at the battlefield with a vacant look. Duryodhan, Karna, Kripa, I, I can't fight anymore. You keep fighting to the best of your ability and protect the throne. Saying so, Dron went into a deep meditation. Drishtadumna was waiting for this opportunity. The moment he saw Drone drop his bow, he jumped off his chariot and ran towards Drone with an open sword in hand. Arjun yelled at him, Drishtadumna, don't kill Drone, capture him and bring him alive. But Drishtadumna paid no attention to his words. To kill Drone was his sole purpose of existence. He climbed up on Drone's chariot, held the old man by his hair, and with a quick blow of his sword, Drishtadumna beheaded the old Brahmin. And then, with a blood curdling scream, he tossed Drone's head in the middle of the Kaurava army while his body rolled off the chariot to the battleground below. The Pandavas were shocked to see such savage display of vengeance by their commander-in-chief and hid their face in shame and sorrow. Only Bhim congratulated Drishtadumna with a warm embrace and said, When Karna and Duryodhan die, I'll embrace you again. With the death of Drone, the Kaurava army went into a complete disarray. Duryodhan tried to calm them down, but they were too scared to listen to any words of reason. The Kaurava generals looked around for Drone, but with thousands of decapitated bodies strewn around, they failed to identify their commander-in-chief. Drone's son, Aswatthama, was busy fighting Shikhandi and the other Pandava warriors. When he saw the Kaurava soldiers fleeing the battle, he figured something must be wrong. He went to Duryodhana and asked, why are our soldiers running away? Duryodhan didn't answer. Ashwatthama looked at Karna. He too looked away. Ashwatthama asked, Why are you so morose? Did something bad happen? Did any of our generals get killed? Kripacharya came forward, held Ashwatthama's hand and broke the news. In vivid details, he narrated how the Pandava's strict throne to believe that Aswatthama was dead and how Drishtadumna killed him like a savage. As Kripa's words entered Aswatthama's ears, he was turning red with rage and grief. He stood like a stone wall and tried to control himself. Then he wiped his tears and said, To die in a fair battle is something one should not feel sorry about. But when one kills an unarmed man by pulling his hair and beheading him in front of thousands of warriors, I call that cowardice and savagery. The way Yudhishthir, the champion of truth and righteousness, used a filthy lie to deceive my father, his guru, is something I can never forgive. They will have to pay for this. Trishtadumna will have to pay for this. He looked around at the Kaurava generals and said, Listen to me. I have in my possession a weapon that will destroy them all. None of the Pandavas, not even Krishna is aware of this weapon. Lord Narayan gave this weapon, the Narayanastra, to my father. 
The Lord instructed my father to use this weapon only in extreme circumstances. For once unleashed, the weapon won't stop until it destroys all its enemies. Nobody can survive unless they drop their weapon and surrender. Today, I will use the Naranastra and wipe the Pandavas off the face of the earth. Ashwatthama pulled out the Naranastra, and as he engaged the weapon, lightning began to strike, gale force winds began to blow, and dark clouds covered the sky. The Korva soldiers cried out in joy. They began to play their drums and bugles and march to the battlefield. When Yudhishthir heard the joyous cries from the Kaurava side, he asked Arjun, When Drone was killed, the frustrated and scared Kauravas fled the battlefield. Now why are they coming back? What makes them rejoice? Who made them rejoin the battle? Arjun was still trying to deal with his teacher's death and wasn't in a good mood at all. He looked at Yudhishthir and scornfully said, I am sure it is Ashwatthama who motivated the Kaurava army to avenge his father's death. The way Drishtadumna humiliated and killed my guru is something that no son should ever forgive. Let alone a gallant warrior like Ashwatthama. You two are equally responsible. Gurudev trusted you to speak the truth. You deceived him and committed a grave sin. Aswatthama is no weakling and he will kill us all. For the sake of winning the kingdom, the throne, we gave up our virtue and stooped to the lowest of the low. We deserve to die. Bhim was furious to hear such discouraging words from Arjun. Shame on you, Arjun. You sound like a forest-dwelling hermit and not a Kshatriya warrior. Remember, the Kaurava stole Yudhishthi's rightful kingdom and tricked us to 13 years of hard exile. They humiliated Draupadi by dragging her by her hair and tried to disrobe her in a full court. You don't think they should be punished for their crimes? If you don't want to fight, then get out of the way. I alone will kill the Kauravas with my mace. Trishtadumna said, a Brahmin's duty is to acquire and disseminate knowledge to his students and preach the laws of dharma. Did Drone ever follow the traditions of a Brahmin? Instead, he took up arms like a Kshatriya and was bent upon destroying us using his terrible weapons. I don't understand. What's the big deal if we had to take a crooked path to kill him? Remember, I was born of the sacrificial fire with the sole objective of killing my father's greatest enemy and I have succeeded in my mission. You should be congratulating me. Nobody complained you when you killed Bhishma. If that wasn't a crime, why my achievement of killing drones a crime? I have a clear conscience and I can claim proudly that I haven't committed any sin. Neither did Yudhishthir. Arjun spit on the ground and could only say, Shame on you, Trishtadumya. I despise you. Satyaki was boiling in anger. I am not sure why somebody is not killing this insolent Trishtadumya right this instant. This man doesn't have the intelligence to distinguish between the killings of Bhishma and Drone. Try to understand you moron. Bhishma himself told us how to kill him and it was your brother Shikhandi who was responsible for his fall. So keep your mouth shut, else I will crush your skull with my mace. Drishtadumna laughed and said, Satyaki, you have committed the most heinous crime yourself by killing a disarmed and helpless Burisrava. And now you judge me? You are the most sinful of all. Now shut up and get back to battle. Satyaki couldn't control himself any longer. He picked up his mace and rushed to strike Drishtadyumna. Bhim stepped in and stopped Satyaki. Don't behave like a child, Satyaki. 
The war is not over. We shouldn't be fighting amongst ourselves. Krishna held Dhishtadumna and Satyaki's arms and said, Bhim is right. We still have a long way to go. Let's try to forget our differences and focus on Aswatthama, who is bent upon destroying us. Get back to your chariots and prepare to counter his attack. On the battlefield, the Pandava soldiers were being massacred by Aswatthama. His Narayanastra rampaged the battlefield like a tornado. The weapon unleashed thousands of lethal armaments like missiles, maces, spears, fireballs and chains and killed whoever came in its path. The Pandava soldiers began to flee the battlefield in hordes. It seemed the weapon would spare nobody and annihilate the entire Pandava army within a matter of minutes. Krishna raced his chariot through the Pandava soldiers and yelled at the top of his voice, Drop your weapons! Everybody! Get off your chariots, horses and elephants and surrender to Aswatthama's weapons! That is the only way to survive the Narayanastra! The soldiers dropped their weapons and knelt on the ground with folded palms. Bhim wasn't convinced though. Don't surrender! Don't drop your weapons! I will stop the weapons with my arrows. Bhim picked up his bow and raced towards Aswatthama on his chariot. Aswatthama laughed and riddled Bhim with his arrows. Krishna and Arjun ran to Bhim and pulled him down from his chariot. Why are you doing this? The only way to stop the Narayanastra is to surrender to the weapon. Listen to me. Stop fighting! Drop your weapons and get down! Arjun snatched away the bow from Bhim and threw it away. Krishna held him down on his knees and asked him to keep his head down. The entire Pandava army, all the warriors, the generals, everybody were on the ground with their weapons by their side. The Narayanastha slowed down and then returned to its abode in the heavens. The Pandava army rose and prepared to fight again. Duryodhan came to Aswatthama and said, What's happening? Why did your weapon fail? Krishna knew how to escape from the Naranastra. The weapon has been disabled. Then release it again. Sorry, Duryodhan. That's not possible. Naranastra can be used only once. If I use it again, it will turn back and kill me. Saying so, Aswatthama drove his chariot to join the battle. Soon, the conch shells rang out to announce the end of the day's battle. After fighting continuously for two days, the soldiers were glad to return to their camps and get some rest before waking up for the battle next day. The Stories of Mahabharata is written, directed, and told by Shudipta Bonik. Audio engineering, original music, and sound design by Avi Ziv. Find us online at facebook.com slash Mahabharata podcast. Join the group for updates and news. Subscribe to the podcast using iTunes or any other podcast catcher. On Twitter, we are at Mahabharata Audio.